Right in this video, we're going to quickly have a look at the array list class in Java. So let me just re read through these comments here. The standard Java arrays are of fixed length. We've seen that in, in all of our examples. When you set a length to it, you cannot change that length. That will be the number of elements that your specific array will have. After arrays are created, they cannot grow or shrink, which means that you must know in advance how many elements in an, ar an array will hold. So you need to decide how many numbers or, or string values or how, whatever your specific array must hold. Array lists are created with an initial size. And that's normally, I think, a size of 10. And when the size is exceeded, the collection is automatically enlarged. And when objects are removed, the array may, must uh, or may always also be, be shrunk. So similar to an array, an array list allows object storage. But unlike an array, an array list object automatically expands when a new item is added and automatically shrinks when items are removed. So let's just see how we declare an array list. So you can say you can see you start typing array list there and it will pick it up in the java.util package. So let's just work with strings. Remember you can only work with uh, object types. So if you want to use integers there's a class called integer uh, which you can use but you cannot use the primitive data types for example int there. So if you want to use integers you'll use the integer class there. Okay, so that's just a class that wraps itself around the, the normal uh, primitive data type of, of integer. So for this example, we're going to use strings. So I'm going to say string names equals new array list, and that's all you need to do. That array list will now basically work exactly the same as a normal array, but the difference here is that this one will shrink and make itself bigger as you add or remove values. Okay, so in this case, in order to add something, remember in our previous examples, what we did was to say, go to names at position zero and go and add John. So now the difference here is not going to a specific index value like this using the block brackets there, but we'll say names, we're going to use some variables, or sorry, some, some methods there, and we're going to use the add method to add something to it. So if I want to add James there, that is basically the same as saying names at position zero equals John. So if I just say names dot add James, then it will add at position zero the value James at this case. If I say names dot add in the sequence that I'm adding my values, it will go into the specific index values. So if I say Peter there, Peter will then go into index position two. Sorry, this one will be zero. That one will be one. So let's just add a few more. I'm going to say names dot add. Let's add those other values also. Let's use John again. And then go to names dot add. And we add Jake again. Okay, so now you can see this one will obviously go to position two. That one will go to position three. And I can add as many values as I want here. And the array list will automatically increase its size if it's, if it's going over the default size. And it will shrink if you start removing elements. So you can only have the, the number of values that you've actually got in it. So in this case, it's James, Peter, John and Jake that's inside of my array. Then I can, or my array list. Now I can also add using a different method there where I can say, go to index number four and add to me this, the following value called Paul. So there's another way of adding where you can say, put it in a specific position. That's like doing the same thing here. Go to name zero and put it, put John there. Now we're just saying, go to index number four and then place Paul there. And you can see that will obviously then be position number four. So if there's already something in position number four, it will just move the rest down. So if I if I said this, uh, names.add three Paul, it means Paul will go in between John and Jake, and that one will now become four, this one will become three. So it will shift up the rest if you add it at a specific position. But if you use this one to say dot set, that will replace a value at a specific position. So let's say the index will be one. I'm going to replace what's currently in uh, saved as Peter there. And let's change that to Peter's. Which means that Peter will not exist anymore, but it will be replaced by Peter's. Then you can also use another method called 
remove, which will remove an object at a specific position. So if I say remove zero there, it will basically remove James totally from my array list and it will not be there anymore. So let's see how we can create a for loop now to run through every element. The same thing again, I'm going to say integer i equals zero. And now remember your for loop. You can see the for loop here. We started at zero and then we said i less than names dot length. So now we're going to say i less than. So it's again names, but you can't use the length method here. Here's no, there's no length, or no, sorry, not length method, a length variable there. There's no length, which means that we need to use something else called size. So essentially size is saying the same as what we used with length there. But remember size will actually give you the exact number of values that's currently stored not the size of your array list it's the size of the number of the values that's currently stored so it's essentially doing the same as what we had with our array uh, there we go right so after this for loop or inside of this for loop now how do we print it out so inside of the for loop we just printed out names i and that prints out the specific value. So now we can't say names i with an array list. The same as we couldn't have said names with the block brackets 0 there. So how do we print out values here? Let's just use a system out print line. And I'm going to say names. So instead of saying names i with an like with an array, we're going to say names.get. And then you indicate the index value. So that's the, essentially doing the same thing. So saying get i will then get that specific object at that position and print it out. So if we run this quickly, uh, let's run this one from there. You can see that we've got first one, Peters. Remember we changed it there, set one to Peters. So the one at position one should be Peters, then John, then Paul. Why Paul? Because you can see that we basically removed at position zero, we, we removed James there. So now obviously Peters will move up, Peters will be first, then John. You can see that we placed Paul into position three, so then it will be Paul and then Jake, and then we're done. And that is basically setting the value. So if we did not change anything here, so let's just keep this at... Uh, let's just not use the set method there and we use add there. So then if we do not remove also anything there, let's just take it away. Then this one will be one, two, that one will be at position three, this one will be four, and this one will be at position five. So if we run out, run this one now, you can see that when we go down, it will be James, Peter, John, Jake, Paul, and Peters. James, Peter, John, Jake, Paul, and Peters. Okay, so with the previous examples, we just moved the things around, removed some of them, but that's basically how it gets printed out. So this is the basics of the ArrayList. In, in videos to come, we'll, we'll use the ArrayList a lot, and that's it for the ArrayList.